With Legendary Pictures Godzilla now in theaters, the time was ripe for me to do a toy review on the eponymous Irradiated Lizard. And what better to choose than a figure from my beloved figure arts line? Actually, Godzilla is part of their SH Monster Arts subline, featuring all sorts of kaiju from Japan's catalog of man in suit films. While the majority of the line has been dedicated to more modern interpretations of Big Green and his crew, 2013 finally gave us a classic Godzilla figure from 1964's Mothra vs. Godzilla. And this being my favorite design, you bet he was begging to be added to my collection. Goji comes in a sizable light green box, which I was surprised to find without any type of display window. But instead, we are treated with a nice large picture of the character, not the toy. Note the holes in the neck of the costume for the actor. Well, thanks for ruining the illusion, Bandai. Not much else of importance about the packaging. On top is Godzilla in big lettering with a small headshot of the toy. The side has a black and white photo of the figure, in addition to the Gojira and Godzilla titles. And the back has more photos, in addition to a profile of the sculptor Yuji Sakai, comments, and some writings about the movie. Of course, all in Japanese. First thing out of the box, if you've never owned a Monster Arts before, is he's kinda small. That large box, it's solely to accommodate his tail. He may be small, but he is a work of beauty. No corners were cut making this figure, which would explain why they cost so much. And he looks just as he appeared in the 1964 film. Let's give it a minute to take it all in. He is a fine piece of work, isn't he? Absolutely amazing! There is not one inch, one millimeter that doesn't have sculpting or texturing done to it. Every scale, every fold, every crack and crease of his hide is represented in full and all given a brilliant paint job. Primarily a dark charcoal gray mix with off-white used on his scales running down his back and ending at his tail and his nails. Though he does receive minimal dry brushing to his knees and a faded stripe down his abdomen, in addition to a slight brown applied to his brow. Huh. While we're there, how about we examine that face? Beautiful! He has that menacing mug and everything about the 64 Goji is on model. The big, piercing eyes, the tiny snout, the bunchy cheeks, and the exposed canines. Hey, Goji! Open up! That's right, his jaw has the ability to open up, giving us a fantastic look at the inside of his mouth. Oh, the teeth, the tongue, and look! Even the roof of his mouth is sculpted in! Go back to his eyes. Yes, they look great, but... Clear plastic layered in the socket isn't as transparent as I'd like. As a result, it's sometimes hard to make out his pupils because everything looks cloudy. His articulation is, um, not what you'd typically expect of an action figure. So let me try my best to explain every pivoting point on this puppy, because there are a lot. There's his jaw, as I mentioned earlier, in addition to three parts in his neck. His arms have a shoulder joint, an elbow which feature a scaly sleeve to cover it, and pivoting wrists. The torso has the ability to turn and rock about, and he has this interesting hip piece which spreads out, rotating thighs, a double bend at the knees, ankles, and a cut halfway down his foot. The articulation scheme is fascinating because there may be a high point count, but many of them don't allow for a ton of movement. But I think that was intended. Each small movement comes together to form a whole larger movement, giving you the range of motion. Some joints are incredibly tight. Just listen as I try to raise an arm, while others give you a standard level of resistance. 
don't think I forgot about the tail. This piece is almost its own entity, so I thought I'd address it separately. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirteen points! Man, that's a lot! It goes without saying it can do just about anything, and I think Bandai handled it perfectly. You can't get a fully expressive Godzilla toy unless you make sure the tail can express just as much as the body. With the figure being this posable, I don't care what he can do without knowing this one simple fact. Will he be able to do the victory dance pose? In a nutshell, yes! Totally worth the purchase price. Unfortunately, he comes with no accessories. No buildings to crush, no tanks to stomp, not even a piece to recreate his trademark atomic fire breath. I mean, come on! That's where they get you. If you want those, you have to purchase them separately. Oh, commercialism! This is the type of Godzilla figure I had dreamed about for years. And now that dream is a reality. I'm hoping he's not the only one they intend on producing in this classic style, as I'd love to see more characters from the 60s and 70s. Hedra? King Caesar? Hell, give me Jet Jaguar! Yes, I realize I'll be burned at the stake for that, but give him to me anyway!